So I'm going to show you a couple other tools and how I can use them in Photoshop to do some fun things. Um, sometimes in an image there's something in my picture that I don't want and I want to get rid of that. Um, there's a couple different ways I can do it. So for example, let's say I don't like this post. I have this post right here in my campsite picture and I don't like where that post is sitting. So I want to get rid of it. Now I could click on my campsite layer here and I've talked about selecting and I could select this post right and hit delete and the problem is it's going to delete it from my image but because there's nothing underneath it there's nothing else that's going to show up underneath it to make it show up um, so that's not really going to work so let me go ahead and step backwards to make that come back and then command d to deselect all right now another option is the eraser tool all right again i could use the eraser tool and i could click and i could erase it uh, but again since there's nothing underneath it it's not going to make it go away so again, I'm going to undo that. So I'm going to show you how to use something called the clone stamp tool uh, to do some really cool um, ways to kind of blur things out. So the clone stamp tool looks like this. It looks like a little rubber stamper. And the way it works is if I click on it, um, the first thing it's going to ask me to do is it's going to, it's kind of like a paintbrush. It's going to let me paint, but instead of painting with like a solid color, it's going to paint with a part of my picture. So the first thing it asked me to do is it asked me to choose the part of my picture I want to paint with. So in order to do that, I hold down the option key on the keyboard. And when I do that, it gives me this little kind of target. And whatever I click on is what it's going to paint with. So if I clicked, let's say right here where the ground is and click the mouse and then let go of my, t my option key. Now I move over here and start clicking and holding down the mouse and painting and just dragging it is going to start painting on my picture, but it's painting with whatever I had selected over here. It's painting with that, and then if I move forward, it'll paint with whatever's above it, and if I move down, it'll paint with whatever's below it. But as I go through and paint, just like so, it's going to replace whatever I had there with whatever was on the ground, just like so. So it works pretty well, but in this case, I got a little high because I kept painting up here, I got part of the chair. So if I get into parts like that, not a problem, I can just do it again. So maybe I wanted to paint this part here. I like the way this looks, this kind of matches that. So I'm gonna go over here, hold on the option key, and then click again to set that as my painting source, and then click and start painting again, and it'll make that part go away like so. All right, so that is what's called the a clone stamp tool and I can use it to remove things uh, in my image uh, which is pretty cool. Now another cool thing that I can do is I can change the colors of some items in my um, in my image if I want. So if I wanted to uh, maybe this cooler, I don't like this cooler being blue, let's say I want it to be a different color. First thing I need to do is select it. Again a lot of different selection tools. Because this blue is pretty much the same color blue I'm going to go ahead and try using my magic wand tool to select it here. And so I'm just going to click on that blue. And it's way too much. So I can adjust my tolerance. Make it something like 20. All right. And this is how forgiving it is. Now I have all this stuff selected here. So I'm going to just command D to deselect. And let's try this again. So I select, there we go, just the blue right here. And I can try a couple different parts. All right. I can also hold down the shift key and select other areas of that cooler that are blue until I get roughly the entire thing selected. I don't want to select the white part. I only want to change um, the blue color. Okay. I could also use, again, my quick selection tool and simply fill in that way. And in this case, that probably does a better job. So I have the cooler part, just the cooler, the blue part of the cooler selected, and I've changed it blue. If I want to change that color to something else, I can go up here to my image tools and under adjustments, I have an option called hue and saturation. And what this allows me to do is I can change the hue of that to just about any color I want. So if I drag this to the right or to the left, it will change that color to something entirely different. So if I want this to be a red cooler, um, I could keep dragging one way or the other until I get a shade of red that I like. Maybe something kind of like that. Now saturation will make it a brighter red. 
or a duller red. In this case, I want it bright. And then lightness and darkness, we'll make this a lighter shade of red or maybe a darker, more maroon. In this case, maybe I want it something brighter like that. And then I click OK. And again, to deselect my selection there, I hit Command D. And now I have changed the color of that cooler um, to red. So I can change colors of anything that I don't like. Again, if I don't like this red chairs, um, let me zoom in a little bit here. So I've zoomed in a little bit here, and let's say I wanted to change the color of these chairs as well. Um, I can do that a different way if I want, instead of selecting the chair, since this has got a lot of different parts and pieces, a lot of angles, it would be kind of tricky. I'm gonna go to Image, Adjustments, and there's a tool here called the Replace Color Tool. This allows me to replace the color of something in my image and replace it with something else. So I'm gonna click on this red in my uh, background here and I pick a nice solid color red. Now this window that opens up gives me the ability to change the hue, saturation, and lightness kind of like I did before. Um, and so if I change the hue, you can tell anything that that was that color red changes in my image. Now it didn't get all the shades of red. There's a lot of different shades, lighter and darker reds that make up this chair. Uh, so I can go up here to my fuzziness and I can drag this to the right or to the left and it'll adjust how forgiving that is and how many other colors it is going to allow, uh, like so. I can also use this plus sign here to add other shades of red. So let's say if I turn this down a little bit, it didn't quite get this color red or it didn't get this color red. If I hit this eyedropper with the plus sign, it lets me add other shades or other colors of red maybe this part here maybe this part up here and now again when i adjust my fuzziness it's totally changed that to whatever it is that i want it to be now right now i'm blue but if i wanted i could make it purple or yellow or whatever color i want to kind of go along with that all right and then when i click ok it's now changed that color and fit it to my screen it's changed those chairs from one color to another like so.